The very first thing we shall learn is the different options for closing down the computer, then how to manipulate a window. If you're watching the video lesson, you will find a solid greenish circle around the mouse pointer. This is for visual effects. You will also find that when the mouse button is used, you will hear a clicking sound. At the bottom of the screen, you will find a greyish coloured bar. This is known as the taskbar. On the far left of this is an icon called Start Button. An icon is a representative picture that could indicate a function, a file, a folder, or an application, etc. You will find that icons are used extensively throughout most operating systems. If we position the mouse pointer over this icon, then press the left hand side mouse button, a menu will appear. This is also called a drop down menu, despite the fact that the menu appears upwards. If you now move the mouse pointer over this menu, certain options will become highlighted. Highlighted is when the options change colour and have become selected. If you look, we shall find one of these options is called shutdown. And if we move over to the right of this, we shall find an arrow pointing to the right. This is called a selector. Once again, these are very common and indicate a sub-menu. First we shall use Switch User. To do this, move the mouse pointer over the option Switch User and this will become highlighted. So this option has now become selected. Now if we click the left hand side mouse button, the screen will change. After a short delay, a list of users of this computer will appear. In our example, there is only the one user called Dave. If another user wants to use the same computer, they normally would create a profile that will contain a username and password. More about this later. You should notice two other icons. If we click on the one to the left, we can make some changes on how Windows behaves. Click on Cancel to close this. On the right you will find another icon that will allow us to restart or shut down the computer. So here we find that Dave is currently the user of this computer and has suspended his session. Now if Dave wants to log back on, he has to use his password. He would click inside this box, then enter his password, followed by pressing the Enter key. You may find that the computer you are using does not contain a password for that user. It can be created later. For this task, just ignore the password option and click on the username. To use the log off, we would once again click on start, then move to the selector to the right of shutdown and then click on log off. The difference here is that all of Dave's settings has been saved, so the next time he logs on, his desktop will appear the same as when he left it. Here, Dave has finished using the computer. This may not seem much different to the switch user, but once again we shall return to this later. Now if we wish to lock the computer, Dave will have to log on with his password. Once again, he will click on Start, then move to the selector to the right of Shutdown, then click on Lock. Now Dave has left the computer and locked it. This may mean he has just temporarily moved away from the computer and locked windows so no unauthorized persons can view his work. Once again, for Dave to log on, he must enter his password. Restart is normally used if Windows has been updated or maybe a new device has been fitted and needs to be reinitialized before it can be used. Another option that has been greyed out is Sleep. Greyed out normally means that the option is not currently available. Sleep is a power saving function. When the computer is not being used for a predetermined time, window goes into sleep mode. This means power so the computer is reduced, normally turning off the display and in most cases the hard drive. This can be a complex setting that we shall return to in due course. To shut down the computer we can click on start and here we have shut down. 
they would use this when he no longer is using the computer and wishes to power it down. A few more items you will find on the taskbar. To the right of the start button is Windows Explorer. This can be used to view your files and folders. To the right of this is the Windows Media Player. This is used to listen and view sound, movies and pictures. This normally requires setting up before it can be used. We can also customise the taskbar. If we look further to the right of the taskbar, you will find another selector. If we hover the mouse over the selector, we can see the message Show Hidden Icons. Now, if we click on the selector, we can see the options. By clicking on Customize, we are presented with further options. Here we can see the first icon called Action Center, and we can see this on the taskbar. By clicking on the selector to the right of this, we can customize our settings. An example, we may not want Action Center icon to appear on the taskbar, so we would select Only Show Notifications. Now notice how the icon has been removed from the taskbar. This can be useful for adding or removing different types of icons. For instance, you may have an application running in the background, so it would be useful to have the icon to appear on the taskbar when it is active. To change the Action Center option back, we click on the selector, then click on Show Icon and Notification, and the icon should reappear. Click on OK to close the Notification Area Icons window. If we click on the Action Center icon, we can see the message, Two Important Messages. To the right of this, we can see the network and internet access. Next is the headphones. The final two items on the taskbar is time and date. Next, we shall look at the basics on how to manipulate Windows. The desktop is the first screen you see here when the computer starts. Think of being sat at your desk, and you have arranged different things on it. Currently, you only have the recycle bin. The background is the picture that you can see on the desktop and can be changed to show whatever you want. This is called personalization. To open the recycle bin, we would position the mouse pointer or cursor on the recycle bin, then tap the left hand mouse button twice rapidly. If done correctly, this will open a window and is the contents of the recycle bin, which currently is empty. Notice that at the top right hand side corner, three further icons, what seems to be a minus sign, square and an X. To close the recycle bin, position the mouse pointer on the X, then click the left hand side mouse button once. This should have closed the recycle window. To open the recycle bin again, position the mouse pointer on the recycle bin, then click the left hand side mouse button twice rapidly again. We can minimize the recycle bin by positioning the mouse pointer on the minus sign, then click the left hand side mouse button. Once again, the window seems to have closed, however, if we hover or just position the mouse pointer over the folder that is on the taskbar, a small window will appear called Recycle Bin. This tells us that the window is still open, but hidden from view. This can be useful if we are, for example, moving items from one window to another. We may have many windows open all at the same time, and some are obscuring others. To restore the Recycle Bin or bring it back, we can click on the folder called Recycle Bin. To maximise the Recycle Window, we can click on the square found at the top right hand side corner of this window. The window should now occupy the entire screen. This is useful if we have many items in a window so we can list and scroll through them. Notice how the square is now what seems to be two squares, one on top of the other. To return this window to its last settings, left click the mouse button on the double squares and this will cause the window to return to its last setting. Also, the double square has returned to a single one. You should also find several other items in this window that we shall be using in future tasks such as menus etc. From this point, when we see click, it means click the left hand mouse button. Windows can be moved. To reposition the recycle window, position the mouse cursor on the top bar of the window, then click and hold the left hand side mouse button. So now when the mouse pointer is moved, the windows will follow it. By releasing the mouse button, the window will no longer move with the mouse cursor. To alter the height of a window, 
we position the mouse pointer on the very tip of the upper part of the window and the cursor shape will change to a vertical cursor. By holding down the left hand side mouse button and moving the cursor in a downward trend this should cause the window to shrink. We can also resize it from the bottom and sides. It is also possible to change the height and width of the windows at the same time. This can be achieved by placing the mouse pointer on one of the four corners of the windows and hold down the left hand side mouse button and moving it centrally. So these are the very basics on how to manipulate windows. Run through these a few more times if you require practice as we shall be using these functions extensively during the coursework.